Hello everyone, this is Janice, and um, today we're going to make a card. I'm still on a thank you card kick, and I just uh, made something just a little different with some scraps that I had. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using the Campin' Critters Cricut cartridge, and the image I'm using is this little reindeer, <coughs> or deer, peeking from behind a tree. He's so cute. I wanted something with a tree. I don't know why. I've been wanting to make something with a tree. So I'm just turning the pages here so I can show you where... This is my iPhone and I have an app called iBooks and on YouTube I learned how to do this. I couldn't... I'd have to go back and relearn to tell you how I did it because I'm not technical, so if you're wondering about how to do this, just just put iBooks, and I think um, Pink by Design, not Pink by Design, Pink, uh, Pink Expression, I think is the name, is her name, Edna. She did a video and showed how she did this from her regular computer, and <clears throat> when I say regular, I mean a PC. I have a Mac, so I had to learn how to do it onto my Mac, which was really challenging. I'm proud that I learned how to do it, but anyway, just before you ask me, you know, how did I do this, just search on YouTube iBooks, and there are tutorials that people have made on this. Okay, so here's the little guy. He's from page 56, and I cut out his regular... Um, cut here in brown and then I did like a little tan color for his face and then a green for the um, sorry about that for the tree there the the leaves and um, then for the speech bubble let me see where did I get that from that was another let's see and I keep looking here. Uh, this is the end, so it's not that. It's a really cute cartridge. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Well, at least you're getting an overview of the cartridge if you're ever wondering about this one. Oh, okay. Well, you know what? I could have used this one, but there's a speech bubble there under sign. Okay, that's not the one I used. Mine is facing the other way. Although if you have a gypsy, all you have to do is use the little flip feature and flip it the other way. And, um, you know, there's other cartridges that have a speech bubble, so you can check elsewhere. But I was using this cartridge, so I just stuck with this. Um... I know, I think it's a sign. Pretty sure. I must have passed it. Shout it out if you see it. Is it that one? No, it's more squarish. Is it that one? No. That's not it. Okay, it's this one. All right. So if you just shoot, choose the sign, the shift of the sign, then you would just have the plane. I I used this one and I hid the contours so that it wouldn't have the words because there's words in there. But you know, if you don't have a gypsy, then just use the sign. And um, what size to cut it? I'm not sure. Let's see. What did I choose? I made it 1.78 high and one and a half wide, but the reason I chose that because I needed it to fit my stamp. So you kind of have to play with that because if you don't have a gypsy, it's hard to see. Or maybe you have an E2 and you can see it. Um, so I'm not sure, but let's go ahead and move on. So that's where I got my cuts from. And um, I'm using a kind of a Huntry Green card base. And all my papers, 
here are from Recollections. So here's my base, going to be an A2 size card. I cut the 8.5 by 11 in half at 5.5. And, and then when you fold it in half, you get a 4 and a quarter inch card base. Okay, so there's an E2 size card, and that's going to be the card base. I'm going to put that aside. And then my little black layer here is a piece of black, four by five and a quarter. And my blue, which is a different blue, because again, I use this, from, I just grabbed my scraps. I just um, cut this one at three and three quarters by five inches. And then this little blue, also it's a recollections paper. It's two and three quarters by three inches. And again, it was a scrap. Just trying to use up my scraps right now. All right. So let's see if I have all my pieces here that I need. Let me get my little speech bubble. There's the speech bubble. Okay, let's do our treatment of our paper because it needs to dry. I'm using this Hero Arts cling stamp. And I'm gonna put it on here just because it's easier to pick it up, but I'm actually not gonna stamp it down. I'm going to put the paper on top. This is acrylic paint. It's by Adirondack, and it's an acrylic paint dabber. And this is the Pearl. I got this from Blitzy. And I just, I love these because you don't have to get out a brush, a foam brush. It just eliminates one, it's one less thing you have to clean up. But you do have to clean these if you like your stamps to stay looking new. I would, if you're not going to re-stamp it right away, I would go ahead and wash it under some soapy water. Okay. Um, Michaels carries these, but they don't carry the pearl. You can just get the plain white there. And I just want to... And I don't want this to be, you know, too neat or anything. I just kind of want, like, a distressy look to it. So I'm not even going to worry if I didn't get a perfect impression. And it's pretty good. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to wash it as soon as I'm done here. And then I'm going to take my paint dabber here and just kind of go around the edges here again to give it a distressed kind of a look. And I'm smudging and smearing the dots and that's okay. Because this is going to be like a guy. This is a guy card again. So, when I think guy cards, I always think texture. That kind of inspires me. All right, so this needs to dry. It doesn't take that long on paper, it's pretty quick dry time. All right, now on this little blue piece, I'm going to get this little snowflake that I also got from. Michaels. They had it at Christmas time. Maybe your Michaels has some on the clearance. I don't know. I didn't see any at our Michaels. And then I just kind of just did a random background type thing. And just maybe here. And then one more at the bottom. Okay. And then again, I'm just going to brush it, whoops, brush it along the edges. And then I added a couple little, just a few little doodle dots to kind of continue the feeling of snow falling. So we'll let that dry again, a couple minutes, and then we're going to do one more thing. Somebody asked me about my, I think it was Jazzy Jess. I'm sorry I didn't answer your question. 
Um, this block here is from Michaels, and it's one of those dollar ones. Joanne's carry them too. And this is two and a half by two and a half. Okay, and I'm going to use it to tie my hemp. Let me get it. Where is it? Okay, just add it. My table's getting messy, so I lose things when that happens. Okay, here it is. This is natural, it says natural polished hemp. And this is from, it's uh, natural color. And there's 100 yards of it, I got it at Walmart. I'm really liking that jute, though. I think I want to try that. <clears throat> so I need to try and see if I can find that at Walmart. Anyway, what I'm going to do is just wrap this around. I'm going to leave a tail here so I have enough to tie a bow. And <clears throat> I'm going to go around. And this is what I use to do my, my bows for um, ribbon. Okay. So I went around, start again here. Here's the tail, and then one, two, and then three. And I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm just going to go underneath here because I want this to be gathered, I guess. Trying to see how did I do this? Okay, I went again through here. And that way it will be gathered and it won't be loose. See that? So I'm just going to tie a knot. Okay, nice and tight. And then I'm going to make a little bow. Just like tying some shoelaces. Okay. I'm going to make this bow a little smaller. Okay, let's set that aside. We're going to put our little cut together. on my mat here to show you. My mat is working still very well. I've had some of you say that you got the same mat and it worked great at first and it lost the stickiness and so I'm just seeing. I'll give you a progress report as we go here. Just getting my spatula. And this is very thin paper. I can't believe I was even able to cut this. This is a pattern paper that I had in my stash. I don't even know where it came from, but it was a um, a scrap. So it actually cut. And usually pattern paper tends to tear on me. So I'm surprised. And I cut this at three and three quarters, okay? And then I'm going to get the other layers off of here. Where's his face? Oh, I see it. It's under here. Okay, let's get the... There we go. Pop that off. And then his little face is over here. And I felt that it was cut too light for a deer, for my taste anyway. So I want him to be a little darker. <clears throat> but again, I was using my scraps, I was just trying to use what I have. And then again, my trusty Distress Ink, I'm using the Antique Linen. And I just took a sponge, and I got this at Michael's. And just went around. Okay. And his little hoof. The hoof really should be a dark, dark color. What did I do with it? Oh boy, here we go. Did I leave it on the mat? I don't think. 
think so. I thought I got it. Is it under here? Oh my word. Okay, well, we'll find the hoof later. <clears throat> I have to cut it again. So be it. Alright, so let's put this thing together. Okay, there's his little hoof. <clears throat> It's like a little um, comma. Just want to make it darker. Let's use my. This is a two-way glue squeeze and roll. That's the kind I like. I'm out of frame here. I'm going to put this down. Put this on here. Okay, and then his little googly eyes. Right, must be losing my mind. I thought I took out two googly eyes. Alright, well, I have to open my little jar here. I have every size of googly eye in here. I just need the tiniest ones. <clears throat> I'm always on the lookout for even tinier ones. <clears throat> I'm sorry. You have to watch this annoying process. I thought I took them out and I didn't. Okay. So now I'm just going to put some of this glue on there. Just added some little doodle dots here to the tree just to add a little interest. Did a long line and three dots. You can do whatever you like. You could ink the edges if you prefer. Okay. Alright, so this little guy, he gets attached here to this piece. I want him to be kind of over to the side a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to use my gum tape from Big Lots. I like it so far because it's not super thick. Okay, so if you tend to mail out your cards a lot, which we probably do, I know I do some, you know, sometimes I mail and sometimes they're just hand delivered, but for the ones that go in the mail, you know, try not to put too much bulk, because I don't want to be a nuisance to the United States Postal Service. And all the postal people said, Amen. So, try to find ways to add dimension without adding too much bulk, if I can. Okay, tell my son, let's be a blessing, not annoying. Alright. Okay, so, these are all dry now, so let's put them together. This is getting to be a long video. Yeah, I need to get to school. Ah, that sounds waiting for me. Oh no, he doesn't mind. I'm sure he's like, Mom, take your time. No problem here. And this is going to go here. 
packaging. Okay, now for how I add this here. Now, let me add my foam tape to the back of this one. And cut it into four pieces so that you can put them on the corners in the middle. Okay, that way I kind of know where my where this is going to get taped. Okay, so what I do now is I take this off of the block and I know it's going to go, well, in this case, it's going to kind of be in the middle. So I'm just going to cut this. Now I can just wrap this around to the back. And tape it with just regular tape. And my little dimensionals are in the way, I think. So I'm going to actually see how this does coming up. Okay, it comes up pretty well. I'm going to put that down lower. I cut that tape off. And... do that, save that step for last, putting, you know, the embellishments and stuff like that on. So I'll just do this here. Almost done. And then here's our, I went around the edges with that antique linen to make it as much or as little or none if you don't like that look. <clears throat> but again, I just want it to look rusticy looking because, you know, we're in the woods here. And just stamp it with Tuxedo Black Memento Ink. And then some more <clears throat> foam tape just to the one side and the other side needs tape take this off and that's it so again oh and then I'm going to add to this one I added a white <clears throat> so I can write because it's hard to see if you're right on that green. Um, thanks for watching. Sorry for the long video. And stay tuned for the next video. Bye.